The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. The first thing Muzan picked up on was the biting scent of herbs and spices. The earthly undertones of mushrooms and spores. And something akin to a mix of garlic with cinnamon. As he quietly approached a wooden manor deep within a swampy forest. Not too far away from a big city. Fine mist was shrouding the view of the surroundings, only leaving the faint silhouettes of trees, so ancient they were most likely saplings when he was still human. His red eyes focused on the manor specifically, the parts that were lit at a time like this. It was old, with very obvious new additions, such as a large greenhouse and a big western-style tool shed, and an addition to the main manor. The place had electricity too, as it wasn't too far off from the settlement, betraying its traditional Japanese style even further. Very expensive, combined with the borderline foreboding swampland and silence. Summer made the place much more charming, though. Muzan slid the door open, allowing him in. The courtyard door had been left open, too. Almost invitingly so. This place belonged to a rather striking young woman. Human. And not a good candidate for demon transformation due to her frailty. She would not survive the transformation. A shame, really. Her mind was interesting and chaotic. It lacked much knowledge, had no appreciation for art or nature, but was familiar with plants, insects, and all things alchemy. A true savant. If her life could be extended via demonification, surely she'd rival even him in just a few decades. Nevertheless, it probably was her short life that made her so special. It was the reason he let her live, and the reason he more than likely would get really annoyed if he had to kill her or watch her grow old, whichever happened first. Muzan pretended to be interested in her, to like her, yes, even to love her, and to his greatest of displeasures, even had the demons stationed around the swamp to prevent slayers from ever interacting with her, just in case. He walked through the manor, stepping into the kitchen, where you were grinding something slowly and carefully. It didn't smell of coffee, so this wasn't for pleasure, but for business. Your ears twitched, and you turned to face him. Muzan forced a smile and chuckled. I can't sneak up on you, can I? He could. He just stepped on that specific floorboard because it produced the lightest of squeaks. Kawashima, he said with a smile. It's been a while. I missed you. You spoke slowly as if you were confused by the words. You are not used to talking a lot due to your isolation. Muzan had discovered you in an rundown shack, half of a village you had lived in, at the time considered you a witch, while the other half knew you just mixed a bunch of herbs together to create crude medicine. At the time, you lived off food scrap donations in exchange for curing mild maladies. He wanted to eat you when he first discovered you. He was hungry, and you were isolated enough. An easy kill. But as he saw you mix powders together, he had gotten curious. He liked talking to alchemists. They had unique perspectives. Nevertheless, there was your chance you knew of blue hysteria, so you couldn't help him gain true immortality, but considering our humans had progress with their trains and their guns, perhaps short lives made humans more creative. So he took a gamble. And he took you in. And realized your usefulness. 
What are you making, my sweeting? He purred with hidden disgust. Still, learning, making, and mixing. He stepped behind you, so close you could feel him push into your personal space. It made you blush hard. Is it your dream mixture? Getting closer, want to test more. In the past you had helped couples conceive. It saw you learned how childbirth functioned, how children were born, all the factors going into it, the biology behind it, all the chemicals needed for it to function, all the body fluids needing to be exchanged, learning about the existence of all these things. You developed an obsession with perfecting your formula, a medicine that could be taken orally, that would provide the user with the unbreakable urge to breed. A true fertility drug. And once that was done, you wanted to learn all about wounds, cuts and bruises, and how you could perfect healing those next. Muzan watched your tiny delicate hands pull out the drawer with the ground powder beneath the grinder. It smelled like licorice and had a white color to it. You put the stuff into a glass bottle that had a fine brown powder already inside of it. The merchant from a far country brought this, you mumbled as you shook the glass mixing the white with the brown. It's tree bark in a far, far away land used to help elders produce offspring. Muzan never heard of such a plant. Good thing he kept you alive. He just learned something new. His gaze followed your hands. On a shelf were already six similar glass bottles, all with a different ratio of the white and brown. Trial and error. Trial and error. You looked coy at him. <laughs> I'd uh, like to trial and error with you. Mozan gulped. He saw himself above that. But if he had to, he needed to keep you happy, after all. Or else this was all a waste of time. Better spend on anything but. The ultimate reason you were required, why you were useful to him, was fertility. In a world ruled by him, with his demons, humans were nothing but cattle. Cattle to be turned into more demons or be used for food. And for that, he needed lots of humans. More than there were now. Cattle. He could not waste his time with trying to figure out how to make humans do the deed more efficiently. All his attention was on beating the sun. And you, even though your intention was to help couples in need... You were here to beat starvation for his kind. Tell me what else you have been doing. You scratched your head. A fine grey powder was puffing up from your hair. When was the last time you bathed, my sweet? He inhaled sharply. I was distracted. Muzan didn't know why, and you obviously didn't either, but you were so hyper-focused on your daily tasks, you were incapable of doing more than five, maybe things, alone on a given day without having a breakdown. One of these was sleep, and at least one of them was actually making sure that you ate and drank enough. And on days where all these things you could do were taken up by stuff that wasn't your work, you became insanely depressed and moody and... Very twitchy. A little danger to yourself. How about you heat up some water and take a bath? Maybe. Muzan gulped. If you value your life, you don't make me do something so far beneath me, you insect. He thought. But you didn't move. You just stood there. An awkward silence. To him, it was razor sharp and cutthroat, but you? 
you were helpless and unable to think, and Muzan found no justification to refuse what he said next, and he hated himself for it. But somehow he managed to say it without any hint of agitation. Would you like my assistance, my sweet? You nodded. He placed his hands on your shoulders and turned you around. Gently he pushed you through the manor towards your bathroom. Plumbing was part of the new growth on the building. He strategically pushed you to ensure that you couldn't see his disgusted expression. Can you do it from here alone? He asked casually once he delivered you into the bathroom. But you quickly turned around in his grasp. Wait, he was holding you quite tightly. How did you just... Your face was immediately buried into his chest. It were these sudden signs of more happening in your head than they actually did that made you so interesting to him. And so he allowed the close contact. You didn't need to say anything, though. He knew exactly what this meant. And so he leaned into you, his hands reaching for the delicate bow of your kimono. Moses' hands were shaking, a mix of many emotions tainting his decision-making. He was upset, curious, and consigned himself to resignation. But to you, this was a gesture of love. His heartbeat was always so interesting to you. Slow, yet it felt as if it was coming from different directions. Seven, in fact. You could feel your lover's hands slide down your back until his fingers took hold of the bow. Gently, he pulled until you felt the relief of its tightness being gone. Blushing, you took a step back. Incapable of looking at his face, his hands were shakily taking your dress off. He must be just as excited as you. Your heart was racing, at least. Deliciously so, pumping your blood throughout your body. With no sound, the kimono slipped from your body. You were a delicate little flower. Your inabilities made you neglect food quite often. Yet you didn't look starved just frail. There was a certain beauty in it. Your hair was as white as snow, and your skin appeared like it had been bleached by strong chemicals. Your eyes were beautiful scarlet red. Textbook albinoism. Aesthetically pleasing. He looked to the side. A bath was connected to a copper gas boiler. You already heated it before my arrival. You planned for this. <laughs> Cheeky little thing. After adding the hot water, he helped you inside. Your back was turned to him. He began using soap to clean your body. We still haven't discussed the progress on the breeding drug. I mean, the marital aid medicine. You blinked. Breeding drug? You mumbled. Yes, yes, when it comes to it, this is truly what it is, isn't it? You realizing that so quickly just saved your life. You smiled. That little slip-up of his almost made him kill you, but your quick thinking just saved your life. You smiled. I like the sound. Breeding drug. Like something taboo. Mm, not to be spoken of, but everyone takes it secretly. Why wasn't that the plan, he thought, pleased with himself. Will you take it with me, my love? Of course. He'd just kill you before it came to that. 
just steal your form, your... No, that thoughtlessness had gotten him into this situation in the first place. He would not repeat it. Ugh, you needed to stay alive. God damn it. Your head pushed back into him, your eyes meeting. Will you take my prototype with me? Trial and error. Your lips curled up into a smile. I want to breathe with you. Muzan forced a smile. Are you sure it won't just break you when it comes to that? You exhaled shakily. Calculated risks, Kawashima. You purred. Muzan's soapy hand slid over your body. His touch is soft, gentle, and exhilarating. He left no crevice untouched. Ah, you have such beautiful hair. How can you not take care of it? It was frizzy and wild and just so dirty it almost looked gray. You didn't answer. Not out of embarrassment, but simply because you had no answer to it. He slid his hands up your hips before removing them from your body and the water. And then he took a comb and began slowly brushing your hair. Muzan had to admit, he faked many loves, many relationships in his life. And he couldn't wait for it to finally end. And he reminded himself, with your invention, humans would be reduced to their true purpose. An hour later, him and you were sitting in your bedroom, in your hands, tiny leather sacks filled with one of your many prototypes. So far, they had done nothing for him. After all, he was a demon. But when used on you, he felt as if there were still too many independent thoughts for it to be considered a success. So you just kept trial and erroring. You undid the cord, holding it closed, and then poured the powder inside your mouth. You coughed, grabbing a glass of water from your nightstand and downing it. Meanwhile, Muzan took his own dosage. The stuff tasted vile, like grinded up mushrooms with wasabi powder, with just a hint of something way, way too sweet. Honestly, he almost vomited from the taste. Not to mention, as a demon, anything but human meat tasted vile already, so he wondered how this truly tasted like. It must be disgusting nonetheless. He looked at you. You look back at him. Another dud, it seems. Your mum disappointed as you didn't feel anything. But then... His hand took hold of your throat. You gasped as you were pushed into your bed. Your eyes looked up at him. He seemed different. The veins on his face were popping, his eyes pulsating, while his free hand pulled at his belt with such strength that the leathery accessory ripped apart. He threw it carelessly on the ground. Foam was coming from his lips, his thumb pushing against your windpipe. Heat was coming from Musan's body. Immense heat, to the point that he was steaming. You were afraid for your life, but intrigued by the reaction. The violence seemed to only be a side effect, but a pleasant one. Whenever the two of you tried your medicine together, he seemed so detached, like he lacked any kind of... desire. But this... This was next level. This was what you were going for. Sadly, though, it didn't seem to work on you. Your mind was perfectly clear. You wondered if there was any biological reason as to why it worked on him, but not you. But you couldn't think for long as you watched Muzan rip his clothes off of his body. You marveled at his musculature, while his brain was going wild with thoughts. It was as if a second entity had awoken. It screamed for relief, subduing his normal thoughts. In the Demon King's mind, he had found himself on a gravel circle, surrounded by darkness. 
He was finally dressed in his favorite suit, and before him out of the darkness, a mirror image emerged. It was unclothed, like an animal, muscles pulsating with malicious intent, eyes glowing so bright he couldn't even see his own pupils. Spiky tendrils were flowing out of the monstrous back like a seaweed in the ocean. Zalvia dripped past its grinning lips. An embodiment of the drug you had fed him. He rushed forward with zero abandon, but as Muzan readied himself, he realized in this mindscape he was powerless. How embarrassing. The beast grabbed his head and slammed him into the ground. Uh, what is this? shouted Muzan's dignified self. Was this thing inside me all this time? But as the creature was beating him, ripped off his clothes, slashed his form, and stomped on his head, his vision switched whenever Muzan blinked. It changed from the beast beating him to what was happening in reality. Unable to control his lust, passion and violence, the Demon King had, had wrestled you into a submissive, pathetic pose. Your tiny body looked delectable like this. He couldn't keep his hands off of it. Its softness, its warmth, its fragility. Pushed into your pillow, your butt was raised up as high as it could, while his monstrous, uncontrollable form was doing things to you. Things he saw himself as a buff of, but he couldn't stop it. Primal screams escaped his mouth while you pathetically whimpered beneath him. You were less than an insect. You were dirt, and he would treat you like dirt. Of course, you felt nothing of his inner turmoil. While he saw a little worm wiggling in pain, you were biting at your pillow with the biggest of smiles. Sure, the drug didn't work on you. So it wasn't perfected yet, but it worked on him. It was like a ball. Exactly what you were attempting to do. You were in heaven. This was heaven. Oh, you couldn't wait to introduce it into the red light district and see the carnage that would come from that. Those were the things that you were thinking of as he was destroying you. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, Husky HD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.